We don't need that. Anything the squash doesn't need as far as leaves. We could just get rid of it. Got a couple things here I don't need. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh! It is June 15th already? It's time for a garden tour. I better go do that right now. Holy mackerel, where's my camera? Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California on a beautiful, warm, sunny morning in the middle of June. But we're not in summer yet. Not for another week. And you know, we really haven't been that hot. A little warm in this area. Certain areas around us have been hotter, but we have not been that hot. Let me tell you what's going on because there's not a whole lot new, I don't think. Maybe there is. Let's start here. We've got the bathtub and the two ponds that Gary did. Gary decided to tear that pond apart. He gutted it the other day. He cleaned everything out because when the raccoons that were set loose out here, somebody set them loose, got in there, they just destroyed the whole ecosystem. They tore everything apart. They threw things in there. And we noticed a lot of the fish were gone. So he gutted it the other day. He took everything out and he found about a dozen dragonfly nymphs still alive. They're quite big. So he put them in the other pond. Now he's going to set this up and I'm going to set it up with him. And we'll get some flowers and different things around. I'm going to, oh, there's a dragonfly. I'm going to set up a solar fountain in there. Maybe I'll take you with me when I do it. It won't be anything that everybody will want to set up, but I'm going to get something in the middle. My meadow is doing fantastic. You've probably seen it in the other garden tours. My moringa that was in a small pot is now in a five gallon bucket. Yeah. But the bucket worked out fantastic. So I have more to plant in there. I like the black bucket. If they used it, somebody used it for painting a house, but it's perfectly fine for the moringa. I've got some broccoli back there. I've got my pomegranate tree. And then I've got uh, sugarcane still growing in there. I've got nasturtiums. I've, I've got all kinds of stuff. I threw some wildflower seeds in here, so I'm not sure if any of those took. Tomatillos are growing in there. There's some wild lettuce. I had some lettuce seeds I threw in there. I've got a zucchini or a squash of some sort. Put a birdcage on top. That's growing in there. So, and I've got your uh, geraniums in there, and looks like I've got tomatoes there, and even a tomato here. I didn't plant those. They just showed up. I probably tossed a few tomatoes there. So that's doing really good. The whole wall is producing a lot of squash. I'm so excited. I gave some away to some friends the other day. They showed up and they were like, wow, I brought in a whole bunch I'm trying to get rid of to use. No, I'm, we don't. We use so much. It's unbelievable because the dogs love it too. So I can just fry it up. You know, you're just basically cooking it on a frying pan with a little butter. It tastes so good and everybody loves it. So we go through a lot of squash and pretty soon I'll freeze it. Not quite there yet. There's a monarch butterfly flying around. So I'm trimming the plants back because we get a lot of dampness in the morning, which creates a lot of powdery mildew. And I'm thinking if the plants don't make a big, big comeback, if it looks like they're gonna slow down in production as far as flowers and viable fruit growing on it, then at that point, I'll start replacing them because they started some new zucchini in the house. So that will be all right, but they may make it. As soon as the weather changes, we get out of what's called June gloom. That's why I'm so surprised it's so sunny today. They don't like the June gloom. It just creates so much havoc on the leaves. They like it drier. There's a few types of zucchini plants that don't seem to get bothered by it, but even the cucumbers, they've had the same issue. So we'll just go you know, day by day and see how it goes got tomatoes over there. I have Swiss chard, but none of the Swiss chard that's over there in any of these toasts, I planted. I didn't plant that. And then back here, the truck bed is doing fantastic. All the buckets have their own squash in there. I have no squirrels because of the tool getting in there. That is fantastic. No squirrels. Couple snails, but that's because the snails were under the rim of the truck. There's a rim and I didn't see them or I didn't, you know, didn't catch them at the time. And they get, you know, they're small, but they grow really quick. So when I see them, I toss them out. They're not really causing that much damage. There's so much leaf matter now on it. They're not going to do anything. And then the chair garden is doing great. I've got the tomatoes I planted, the carrots I transplanted here. I've got tomatoes growing there. The red runner beans are just growing up like man. I've got zucchini over there, more tomatoes there. I've got some watermelon here that I've planted now that's doing good. And a few, and then a whole tote of baby walking onions that are taking off. I've got garlic chives over there, celery. Now the celery I'm going to move out. I don't want that much celery. I love celery, 
But with celery, you don't want to have too much celery, especially growing in with your plants. And we'll get into that soon. Like here's another one. It's got to go. So I'm going to be taking the celery out and I'll be composting them. They'll be going on the bottom of the totes. Some of the totes I might refresh a little bit by taking a lot of the soil out, putting more matter on the bottom of the tote, and then putting the soil back. But I'm not sure because they're doing so well that I really don't have to do it with a lot of them. And then I've got flower pots all along the bottom and they've got plants in them. And that's a place I can plant my celery. Rabbits don't really bother the celery too much. So that works out really good. Let me grab you and let's walk down and take a look at the cardboard box garden. My box garden, that's been doing phenomenal. So good, I'm thinking of placing a few more boxes around the property. And as it grows, it will break down and make my own soil. All that that we took out around the meadow and we filled up the wheelbarrow with all that wild weeds that were growing, that's gonna make my soil. I put that on the bottom of a tote. And then when you put it on the bottom, it's a win-win because you need less soil at the time. And then as everything is going back to nature, I'm creating my own soil, whether I use it this year or the plants, you know, the plants use it this year, or whether I go back and get it later for next year. So let's go ahead and look at the box garden. So there's the box garden. I just cleaned out a lot of zucchini and squash out of here. This one I trimmed all the way back due to all the powdery mildew. If it doesn't look like it's gonna make a comeback, then I will just start all over. I'll throw some more leaves in there, water it real good. I'm gonna give it a few days because I don't need any more. There's still squash through here that I missed. I went back afterwards and found more, so I'm just leaving it on the plants. There's a round one down there. And then here, the tomatoes, I'm gonna stake that up better. I have a new way of staking and we're gonna look into that because you can get trellises and all kinds of stuff. I'm planning on maybe going up on the wall a little bit, but I have a new way in there that anybody can do. You just order something online, costs almost nothing, and you can make all kinds of trellises, especially for container gardening. I am just so jazzed over it. The tomatoes are here growing well. Uh, this is a new plant back here that's coming up. I'm slowly working on this too. I've got watermelon started in there. I've got watermelon. Well, that's what we, you saw here. I've got the, the beautiful, these are the hundreds, the, the cherry type tomatoes. There are the sun golds. They are doing fantastic. I've got peppers down here that we've been picking. The eggplant is just starting. Something's been nibbling on it and I have seen grasshoppers in here, but it has not been any squirrels or rabbits in here. The rabbits did get a squash the other day. The squash, did grow over the tool. So they got it and they've been nibbling on some of the leaves and that's perfectly fine. And we're gonna just kind of walk straight through. I've got more, this is actually a cutting. This is another 100s, look at this. This is a small cutting. When I put it in there, it was only that tall and I took it off of one of the other plants. I've got more watermelon growing. Now we're not really setting watermelon. I found one the other day, but I don't know if it's gonna set yet. But this watermelon, you know, it's just for us, we have cool nights. They prefer the watermelons to have warmer nights. So we're getting there, we are getting there. And then the cucumbers, I've got to get them off. I've been getting them off. See something that looks like roly polies there? I got to get that off today and then trim the plant back. If it doesn't come back, I'll get some more seeds started. This has been doing fantastic. And you know those hoods we make, you can put them anywhere. You can just sit them in a tote and protect some young plants. I've got a watermelon planted in there. More watermelon through here right now. I just laid the tool here. I've got some more squash that I planted in here. More in here. I'm going to get more through there. There's not a whole lot here, so let's kind of walk through quickly. The eggplants, I've got the peppers growing in the grow bag. I've kind of given up on grow bags. It does, they don't do that well here, that's all. But for the peppers, that'll be okay. Maybe I'll drag a couple more grow bags there because peppers, unlike other fruits and vegetable plants, they don't mind getting dry. Look at this. Oh, I get to show you red. See how they go from black? These are the black cobras. Look how big they are. This plant is two years old now. This is off the pepper tree. But see this? Isn't that cool? So when they're real tiny, I don't even see any teeth. Well, I guess they're black now. A lot of times they're green. No, they are growing in black from the beginning. Interesting. But they start kind of green. There's kind of a green one down there. And then they turn black as they grow and then they turn red and that's when they're hot. 
when you dry them, they're even hotter, but that's hot. You want to cut those up carefully when you're cooking with them or making salsa because they are, the black cobras are really hot. Malabar spinach from last year going way up in the air. So I don't know what I'm going to do with them because like I said, here I haven't done anything. I'm kind of still, well, I'm not figuring out what I'm doing. As you see, all the weeds are gone. I've been going through and collecting all the weeds and that some of the totes, you know, that I'm going to set up. Then I started putting the weeds in there like this one. I've got a squash growing in there. So I'm slowly going through here and deciding what I'm going to do. Green sorrel, it's drooping because we're getting warm. The sun is really, really bright. These are those planters that they used to sell years ago. Not crazy about them. I want to get some more pots on the bottom, but they're here, so I'm going to use them. Set something up on that chair. Let's see, that's just a chair I picked up out of the trash. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's an indoor dining room chair, and it works. But I'll get a better tote on there. I'm going to get a big tote on there. Here's my carrots. I let them go to seed, and then I just let them drop. And then I transplant them out of here. See all the baby seedlings? And just go get them. Look how gnarly that one is. I let it do its thing and have the seeds. And then I have seeds from there. Even there's a sunflower back there I can take seeds from. And then more of here of nothing I haven't planted yet. But I've got parsley in here. So this works out really good. I might just leave this because this gives me all the parsley I want. Plus it will go to seed and then I can transplant some of the babies or just take some of the seeds. I'm still debating on what I'm going to do here. I'll probably leave the basil. Since I tricked that basil, it grew all winter. And then maybe I'll do tomatoes and maybe I'll do another eggplant in here. See how you can use three chairs? These metal chairs are like 10 bucks. You can get them at Target or Walmart or anywhere. You can get them at yard sales for next to nothing. And then just the board across and you can put three totes on two chairs like that. Now you wouldn't want to put them on dirt. This is more of a gravelly driveway so there's no real you know, soil. Otherwise because the chair legs are just like pipes they may sink a little bit so you could put bricks under them or something. I've even used old dish plates once. That will work or cement patio would be perfect or wood patio and then you could get three totes with two chairs. All right let's go in the front yard. We are now in the front yard. I already know I'm going to get squash in here, some sort of zucchini. Maybe I'll do cocozel. I'm going to get a few different types growing in here. It'll be easy to tool if squirrels come in and rabbits cannot get into this raised bed that Gary made. And if you want to know how to make it, he's got a video. Go check it out. This is a puzzle. The whole thing comes apart. Isn't that pretty? He made it for me. So anyways, I'm going to go through here. I have not yet. You know I'm busy. I've got all these gardens to take care of. Because of these trees, and I'm really pretty sure that these trees are blocking out pretty much all my sun, I may put some tomatoes in. I'll take the tool down from last year. Don't, don't throw tool away. We can use tool for all kinds of things, even old tool. Oh, don't throw it away. Put it in a flower pot, tuck it away somewhere. I think here I'm going to go ahead and get some greens going. And then if I plant them and take care of them, I can get some tree collards or different types of collards or kale growing and keep that going maybe all year. Might put some tomatoes in here, but I don't know if I'm going to do squash. Because last year I put some squash in there and though I grew it, it grew, it didn't grow like it did the year before and the year before that, which they were massive. They were like torpedoes, like what I gave to my friend. They were all massive, but because of the lack of sun, they don't grow as big and the plant doesn't stay as healthy. We're going to have to talk about plants because some of you have been asking me different questions on plants and I'm thinking it may not be the right weather and if they're not healthy that's when you get a lot of insects. Yes we have nature in here and nature takes care of a lot for us but if the plant's not healthy nature's trying to return it back to the soil and start again. So it, they just didn't do that well. So why fight this area when I have so many other areas? Why not put things in there that are going to grow good and this I know gets good sun. It's pulled out a little bit more and as the sun goes across the sky it just seems like it gets a little bit more sun. Here, know what's missing. Some of you are yelling, I know, I know, it's the redwood table is missing. This is the table that Gary found by the railroad tracks. He was driving by the railroad tracks and he saw it, somebody had thrown it away and it's been sitting in the yard by my chair garden all these years. And the other day I said to him, wait a minute, I think I have a great place for it. I want it in the front yard. Get rid of the redwood table that had these little planters on it that don't do anything for me really. They're good for starting stuff, but that's it, or maybe flowers. And bring the table here because I have too much ginger and too much turmeric. And we 
didn't really store it that well as far as freezing it and it's all growing. And I actually would rather have it growing than freezing it. So this table, hopefully, if all goes well, maybe you'll see it in two weeks, will be covered in ginger and turmeric. It should be almost as good as the other. Let's walk down here and I'll tell you why I'm thinking of here. Because it's gonna be similar. Now, yes, it's got some sunlight, but what it doesn't have is the afternoon hottest sun, you know, summer sunlight. When we're really in summer and it is hot, that's when the ginger and the turmeric really suffer. They don't like it really hot here and they don't like drawing out. So if they can do okay with this wall, the only thing this is gonna get, see this top of the table still has shade? Is they may, they may get an extra hour, I think. We'll see how it goes. It's got an umbrella hole in the center. I can always stick something in the center and shade it <gasps> with the new method I'm using. Okay, I just answered my own question. I can put something there and shade it if I have to. I can make something so I can shade it if I need to. Here is the ginger and turmeric. And look, every day I come out and there's more. This is ginger. Ginger has the light stakes I put in there, the tote lid markers. There's a ginger. I keep looking because they keep popping up. This is turmeric. Turmeric's got the pink. There's another turmeric there. I don't see anything here yet. Oh, wait, wait. No, see, that's a palm tree. Okay, so it's a palm seed, but they're coming. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I showed you this one already. So there's that one. And then here, the black turmeric, I put it in those blue purpley buckets and they were the first to come up. So I've got here, here, and there was, no, they only have two because I gave Gary the third one. These tops I make, you can make them all shapes and sizes. Oh, I didn't even see this. Work fantastic. Now, why do I put a top on some of them? I haven't had too much problems this year, but sometimes I've had a rat or something get up here and want to eat the new growth. That's all they want is the new, just the, the little bits coming up. Like, that's why I put this wire best in, like this. I, like I said, I haven't seen any this year, but I've come out before in the past couple years and they've chewed it down a little bit. Just take it down, just eat the top. So I figured since I've got them laying here, there's another one. I'll go ahead and just put it on top just in case. But yes, this table is going to look so, so different within a month. It's going to just be full of plants. Now, a lot of you have asked, when do you eat ginger and turmeric? Truthfully, anytime. I could come in here right now and even eat that one if I want. But I may hurt the plant and it may not grow back. Once it starts to grow, you can move the soil away from it and cut part of the rhizome off and then just leave it. I've done it. I know some people say you can't. I've done it. And it will continue to grow. You don't have to dry it or anything. Put some soil by it. It doesn't matter. It, it works. Okay, it works. You can eat fresh ginger and turmeric all year long. In fact, you can cut off a big piece, use as much as you want, and if there's any little knobs growing on it, you can put it back in and that will grow too. I'll have to do something special on ginger and you know special on turmeric. In other words, individual videos because they don't grow the same. Though I can grow them the same in flower pots, they most certainly do not grow the same. And I haven't seen anybody talk about that. And I'm not sure why, but I have found that their growing habits are much different. That is why I will never, personally for me, grow turmeric in a tote. Is there anything wrong with it? No, but I cannot lift that tote and tip it where I can tip any of these smaller buckets I cannot, I just saw a rabbit run by <laughs> in my garden. Okay. Anyways, let's get back to this. And that's why I won't put turmeric in a tote because I can't, the truth is I can't get it out. And I'll explain that in another video. Look at this. I grew them. I believe I had some on the windowsill growing. They were just little seedlings in my tool and I brought them out here. They looked really bad, the plants. There was just a couple and they made it. Oh, see, this is dry. I'm going to have to water the stevia. The stevia likes a lot of water. So now I've got a couple zinnias growing in there, but this has got ginger in there and I'm not sure if it started yet or not. But we've got, there it is. I don't know if you can see it back here. The leaves are in the way. See the ginger? Can you see the ginger? See right there. That's ginger. So I'm growing flowers right now in with my ginger. So that should be really, really cool. All right, let's keep going and let's look, see what's going on in the bird garden. We are now in the bird garden.
gonna warn you, I haven't done a lot of planting. I've been working when I get a chance in the bird room, which we'll walk to in a few minutes. I'm gonna have to trim that. Look at that, that's a tree colored. Look how big those shoots are. I should have trimmed them a long time ago, but I can still cut the straight ones and replant that. Any of these can be replanted into a new plant. These are perfect. Get them this size and this is perfect. But look at that, isn't that gorgeous? It's really staked up, but it's doing really good. I'm gonna be planting in here soon. Got some squash that my daughter gave me. I think it's called candy squash. She said they get like 10 pounds. I might put them in here and let them run all over. She said they get really big. She said she planted them in her yard and they're now in her neighbor's tree. That's interesting, which I don't want, but it might look really cool. Provided the squirrels don't get it, so we'll see. But right now there's nothing in this container. I'm still throwing, as you can see, compost and stuff. And when I say compost, kitchen scraps in there. So all in all, this is just wild, but it's food. I mean, I've got lemon verbena. I've got all different types of kale, you know, which is dinosaur kale. I've got some, there's dazzling blue kale through there. There's purple tree collard, regular tree collard. I've got kind of everything wild. Um, walking onions are growing wild. They're everywhere. And then this is the dinosaur cutting that I did off of my old, old plant. And then here I've got mint and walking onions and more mint down there. So there's a lot of stuff growing. Look, this walking onion fell on the ground and did exactly what it's supposed to do. It's been there for a year now and it's doing really good. We moved this here. You probably saw it on the last garden tour. This is chocolate mint with that dreaded strawberry mint. So that, ugh, I don't know. I don't eat that, but it sure does smell good. So all in all, this is doing really good and I love the way we can walk in here. And then this is a plant that's come up in our yard. See all the damage there? These are birds. The birds have been eating the greens. This is really good, whether it's for cooking, whether you want to eat it raw, put it in a green drink. It's kind of a hybrid among everything. And I am just really, really happy. Only the plane is so low. Okay, he went by, it went by really low. This is the bird room and it is coming along great. I'm working on it slowly. A lot of times I work on it at night. I've got all the flower pots I'm starting to put flowers and different things in. This is an emu plant. It throws pink flowers. This grows very tall. Look how tall it's growing. I've got some of my pansies. I don't even know what these are called. I forgot, but they are absolutely gorgeous. This should not be in there. This is a tree collard and it is a cutting. So I'll have to get that out fairly soon because it really took off. It was a little cutting, but look at that. And that's another emu bush, but this one grows like a bush and it has these orangey yellow flowers down there. The hummingbirds love them. Look at that. That's my bottle, my soda bottle fountain. Is that cool? I love it. The, the solar panels up there, that thing just goes. I put a stick through here so the birds can land on it and use it. And look at that. This is so clean and it's been out here for days and days. And I will say it's balanced, which is not a good thing. It's literally balanced in that pot. I have to secure it better. Everything here is actually running. Got the rock one back there that's running. Part of the solar panel is in the shade, so it's just kind of burping. Then I've got the glass bowls. See how the gold bowls always kind of turn yellowish? Just clean that one too, I think, last night. There's got the blue cup in it. Then I've got my bucket. That's dripping. It's probably not sitting there right, and we can fix that so quickly. Plus, it's very bright, the sun. It probably does not have, there we go, see? Just needed a little alignment and there it goes. Now it's fine. And then I've got this one. This is one of my favorites. I made this out of cement. We haven't been back here probably. There's a bucket with some different types of brassicas in there that came up. That is just mint growing wild all through there. It's spearmint. And then I've got my rose bushes. I have to be careful. Gary told me not to plant them because they're so full of thorns. And yes, they are full of thorns. And yes, I have been bitten by them. But you know what? They grow like weeds and I propagated them. Took it off of another one that I had. Did some cuttings in a tote. Put, like I showed you before, I think I, you take a pot, a small pot, put some cuttings in there and then sit it in the totes that you're growing your, your food in. And it just loves it and they just take off and grow the cuttings and then you can move them anywhere you want. Oh, candlestick. I made that one years ago. Candlesticks are fun to make. This is nothing. This is still to remind me to change that up because I want to put a really nice one there. Here's the bucket. Look how it's running. That one came off of an electric one. 
it, you, the pipe was inside. I didn't bother, bother putting the pipe back inside, but it goes inside the bucket. I don't have to clean that thing for the longest time because it stays so spotless clean. That's the globe, and that's in the shade, so it's not running right now, see? But as the sun moves, it will start to run, and then that one will run. I've got walking onions. I've got this solar light that my daughter got me, and then that's a solar light that looks like, well, it's supposed to look like water at night, which is really cute because it lights up. And that's a solar light. She got that for Mother's Day and that for my birthday last week. Okay, so let's see what else. That's pretty much it. I'm going to hang some stuff that some of you are going to get quite excited about. So hopefully I can get to that. I was hoping to get to it yesterday, but that didn't happen. So I'll get to it soon. And then I'm thinking some of you are going to look at it and go, I want to do that too. That's what I'm hoping because I came up with it and it's working fantastic. And then there's the bowl, which... I am slowly shaping this collard plant that is growing like a bonsai plant. So I'm trying to shape it so when I'm sitting over here, I can peek through and see the birds that are taking a bath on the ball. And it's working. I'm still shaping it, but I'm getting to it. And so really not a lot's been done. I can, be, I can show you from here. Let me step here, but let me tell you something. It's all wild and it's all food. What's not food? The geraniums aren't food. And then, of course, in here, there won't be a lot. There'll be food, but a lot of it's going to be flowers. Doesn't matter if it's edible. But all through here, all that's edible. The only thing that's not edible is the geraniums back there. So this is like a wild jungle. It's natural, and the birds come in all day. Right now, even though it's still morning, it's not noon yet, it is so warm that the birds have come in in the morning. They've gone to the fountains. And then they leave. And then you won't see them just coming in for a quick drink. And then they just take off and go on their way. So it's going to be kind of on the quiet side during the day. And then as the sun starts to kind of get down a little bit, you'll still start coming in to eat and everything. And still here, I am thinking of putting chairs and stuff here. Well, here's eggplant. I did get my eggplant planted. And see this? If I was smart, see that one already broke because the plant's gotten too big. I should be clipping this off. And getting that rooted and even this big piece you can root those you just cut it take all the cuttings off as long as it's attached that will stay alive for the longest time it's still attached so there's no hurry but fairly since how this one got dry but then it's still attached so it's still alive so i should do that fairly soon i will i will this is four o'clock they'll open later on four o'clock and that i leave for the hummingbirds that's not edible that came up wild Probably some birds drop the seeds. And so I just leave that. That's, let's see, that is purple tree color that I'm planting back there. So all this you see here is purple tree. I want to get rid of this. Purple tree colored. And then I've got, that is something, that's a designer plant. That's, I still think it's a three-way. That's another cutting of mine. The big dark green leaves, it, I, I think it's a cross between a dinosaur kale colored and purple, dazzling purple, uh, dazzling blue kale. That's what I think it is. I think some seeds we had growing, we didn't know what they were. They flowered and the other ones flowered. And then those offspring, the third generation, it looks like a cross between those three plants. And it tastes fantastic. It's really, really good. So that's it. So nothing is really new in there. I wanna put some more eggplant. That's last year's eggplant, two years old actually. I think it's better to start new and I've got a couple more I wanna plant. And like I said here, let me step back. I do believe I'm gonna put some chairs here. Oh, well, let me show you this. Yeah, the birds bury the seed. Well, actually they don't have to bury it. It falls from here. This is spray millet. Do you know how much spray millet costs to go buy for your pet birds? Look at this, this is spray millet. And this is the regular millet. And this is coming out of the bird seed that we feed the birds because we feed bird seed to the birds that are pet grade. In other words, it's for your pets. I'm not buying the store-bought because I don't know what grade they are and how good they are. So we like buying, like going to the pet store or the feed store and buying good grade seed. And it's healthy and strong. And when they fall and they get a little bit of water, they grow. Isn't that beautiful? really should harvest this. Isn't that cool? And you can hang it up and the birds will come eat it. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. And then that's the Moringa. Planted that last year and it's coming back. The big one, of course, we took out. You probably remember that from last year. But 
now we've got small ones here and then of course how to plant a dozen papaya in an 18 gallon tote and be successful no don't don't but actually i came up with an idea <laughs> told gary yesterday and then this is of course my curly purple kale look at this i want to get cut more cuttings off of that i did some cuttings and they're doing really good they're actually in the rainbow garden i I don't know. I'm sure I can get seeds from it. I don't know. I haven't looked, but the plant grows so well here that I'm going to continue to do cuttings off of it. Celery. I had onions in here. There's still one onion left. Do not plant celery with your onions. All right. So there's more celery. And if I want that mint, I've got to get that celery out. But I do have places for the celery. So I'm going to move that out. Let's step out here and see what's going on. Okay, now we are out in the rain. We're almost done. Rainbow Garden. I am not using these anymore. So you can ask me questions, but I, I'm going to tell you, maybe for strawberries in the shade, see it gets a partial shade here with the tomatoes. It's doing okay, and the strawberries are sending some runners, but obviously the rabbits are eating the ends of the run runners off. It's too dry for my area because technically we are dry. And that is an issue. And so logically, if you're in Oregon, Washington, you probably love it. Other places too, you love it. But here, this is constantly drying, all right? This is drying out. This is constantly drying. And let's say it was sitting on the dirt. Okay, it won't be drying, but it'd be sucking. So what part is holding in the water? And if you're in an area that's having a severe drought, you tell me where that water is gonna go. I don't even need to answer that. You tell me where a tote, and yes, the plant looks really bad because the deer come here every day and nibble on it, but they don't eat geranium. See, somebody broke a couple leaves off to try. Obviously did not like the taste, but that's okay. It'll root and take hold. You tell me where that's gonna dry. It can't dry on anywhere on those four sides. It could pull from the bottom. I put something down there so the roots won't go into that. The tree roots. That's why you see like cardboard down there, plastic, or whatever it is. But the point is, it holds water. And if you put your holes up, you've got a reservoir of underground water. You know, like you drill for water. You've got water and the plants can send their roots down there. It works. That's all I can say. Nothing new here. I haven't done anything here. I need to get more water to the papayas. They really suffered this past year with the cold winter nights. We had a lot of cold nights. And on top of that, now we're in a drought. So I water and water, but you know, they're gonna have big roots. They're gonna say, how oh, they have roots if they're in pots? Because they have sent their roots. You saw the other one, they sent their roots deep into the ground and all over and they're looking for water. So I'm trying to get more water to them. And actually that one's doing really well. I see tons of new growth here. Wow, this just took off in the past couple days. Oh, it's set root. Because think about it. Let's step back. Let's all think about it. Sometimes you plant something and it doesn't grow. And you go, why isn't it growing? Believe you me, it's growing. If it's still green, I don't care if it still sits there that big, it's growing. And what is it doing? It's doing everything underground. All the excitement and all the wonderful new things are underground. Once it is set underground, because the roots is the heart of the plant, then it starts on the top. It can't start on the top if it hasn't really set on the bottom. That now is set. So I can lift that trash can off soon. And this is planted in a cardboard box, see? I don't have to worry about a plastic tote breaking to pieces because it's gonna eat that box alive, the microbes, mother nature and everything. And that plant will be in the ground, which I do not have a single papaya here in the ground yet. So that will be interesting to see how it grows here. But it's going to be in the ground later. It's still in the cardboard box. Then I use those other totes around here to just plant anything in. These are just plants I moved that were broccoli because I'm composting in those. I've talked about this on my other videos. Full of leaves and branches and everything. When you water the plant in the tote, that terrible looking broccoli, it is coming out. See the holes on the bottom? and it's feeding this plant. It's not just watering it, it's feeding the plant. I'm, I'm sorry, but for me, totes are gonna work a hundred times better. I was gonna say a thousand times better than a grow bag ever will, for me, for me. 
Not for you, but for me. All right, so let's walk over here. My potato mint is doing fantastic. I have to remember to keep the potato mint covered. Now these are just little pieces I put in there, so I'm really happy with that. This is the plant from last year, and the reason I have to keep it covered is because the squirrels love it. So I'll have to make sure that later I get a dome cover on that and get that watered well. They do like water. They're in the mint family. They throw these little potatoes. They taste just like potatoes, but you can eat them raw or you can cook them. And the same thing here, I only have a little basket in the middle. So I'm gonna get that all covered and make sure that the rabbit doesn't get in there and eat it. And then here, I've got squash. Look at that, zucchini, I'm so excited. I've got zucchini. You wanna know something? I was very upset. This was the plant I planted and a squirrel came and ate the whole center out. And I told Gary, I lost my plant, but I left it. And then I put a pot here, which I fill up with water, just water. There's some leaves on the bottom, but it's turning in the soil. And it came back to life. Look, there's more back there. So I'm very happy. This needs some more water right now. But the thing is, it's also very warm. So when the plants do this, they're protecting themselves. They're pulling the water out of the leaves going back and back down into their roots and then when the sun drops down later it will pop up even if I don't water it because this was watered yesterday it will pop right back up see where my holes are my totes have at least one inch of water in them all day I only water every two or three days just come through here and water one two three I make these lids you've seen the videos I don't need the lid but having the lid hang there right now or just draping some tool around the squirrels won't bother it. So it works out really, really well. Another zucchini plant there. Oh, wait. oh, geez, look at that. Okay, that's exciting. So I've got, oh, here's the cutting I did, see? It's probably too much for the zucchini, but I'm gonna leave it right now, but that is just so exciting. See how I layered? I put a bucket there with holes. Now those holes will be down on the bottom, so I can water that bucket and it will water the zucchini. Don't even have to water the zucchini. And it will also feed. So if you put in, if you layer and you put in a new pot with all kinds of leaves and let's say even kitchen scraps in the pot and then you put some soil on top, you are now feeding your plant. You don't need fertilizer. Some of you have told me you're, you started your plants, they were looking really good and then they've cut back on growing good. They probably need some plant food because mother nature would be continuously dropping leaves. It doesn't matter what leaves. It could even be their own leaves, but they're constantly dropping and constantly feeding the plant. So if you take something and well, go look at my two system, that would work perfect for you. You set up a two system in your totes, if you've got totes or raised beds, and you want, that's a two system. You want, see how beautiful the celery grows with two, two system? You load this up with whatever. I see peppers growing down there. And then I don't think, I, I haven't lifted this. No, I need an extra hand. You put your kitchen scraps, leaves, or whatever you want in there. You water this. You have holes in this, holes in this. It waters that, and it feeds everything. You can't beat it. You cannot beat it. And that's it. Look at that. Don't look at that, because that's my next project. So it's one of them, but that's not the one I'm really excited about. It is just doing fantastic. I start my seeds in here. I don't have to even harden them up. Look at that. Peppers from the grocery store. Peppers from the grocery store. Isn't that cool? Gary went to the grocery store, brought home a pepper, I planted the seeds, and he's been pulling them out and putting them in his garden, some of them, and then I'm going to start some more in there. Here, I was going to tear this apart, but the tomatoes came up from last year, so good. So I'm going to redo this. I haven't done it yet. Oh, and I have, see, this is what I'm talking about, propagating. Let me see if I can get you in here to see this. See this? It's probably set root. Yeah, it's starting. There, that's potato mint. I'm hoping you can see that because I can't see the camera. All right, that's potato mint. And I had a piece when I was planting and I stuck it in a pot. I should have done more. It is a real difficult plant sometimes to find. It grows like mint. It's got a square stem like mint does, but you don't, you, you probably could use leaves, but there's no taste to them. It's the tubers that you want. And that's what you want potato mint for if you want to grow something like that. And my pizza garden, you cannot beat that. I haven't done anything with this this year. I was thinking about it, but the basil, the purple and the green basil came up on their own. I gotta be careful there's no bees here. Watch me knock them over. Look at the rosemary cutting I put in there. See, in its own pot, rosemary. It was just a little cutting. The tomato has come up on its own. I have no idea what kind of tomato, but I've got a basil down there. I have three tomato plants, two. 
two tomato plants coming up in there. Now the peppers are from last year. That's why they look so weird. They're from last year. They grew up, up, and then they lost all their leaves for the winter. And looky, looky, they are just starting to load up. I know you can't see because I'm one-handed with this, but there's more peppers under there than this one. And then they've got back there, and then this is thyme. Finally, I found the place that thyme grows. It's in its container, and it's just sitting there. It is set root in the bucket. It's in the middle. It's so happy it flowered, and it's continuously growing, which is a good thing. Then I've got my sage. I've got my regular sage that I bought a while back at the 99 cent store. They used to get these live plants in to eat. So that's my original sage. And then my tricolor sage, this was a cutting. If you go back at last year, you'll see it was very small. And then a tomato plant again is coming up. No, I haven't gotten to that yet, but that's gonna be another vertical garden. This is a vertical garden. And I know some of you have said, oh, it's gonna fall, it can't fall. It's gonna fall down. Nope, it can't fall. It's all locked. If you want to make a vertical garden and you only have a little tiny space, think of all the stuff you could grow in this. It's amazing how much you actually could grow in here because you've got all these five gallon buckets and they're all locked. So watch the video if you're interested. You can do a whole wall with this and, it, and you can go as high as you want. I didn't want to go that high, but I could have. And I'm going to make one more there and then probably put one more tote back there. And then this I'll just leave for flowers and stuff. And then here I've got a celery growing back there. I've got another purple tree colored there. So it, it's just, this, is, this will be it for in here. And then just to be able to sit down and enjoy it. And that's what I want to do this summer, I think. No, I've got so much to do. I came up with something that is so exciting. I just started using it and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So that is the garden tour. I am getting back to work. I have a fountain I'm working on that so many of you are going to want. I've got a few of them, more than one. I've got a whole bunch. But there's one that specifically a bunch of you have asked about. And then I've got another one that's super easy to do. And then I've got another project for trellising. Oh my gosh. We'll get into that another day. With that, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going back to work. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, my pepinos. They just keep growing and growing.